go ahead and get started. I see people are starting to, to join us. Good morning, um, happy Sunday. Uh, obviously, I wish we were together, but I'm super excited to see people joining us for our second live stream yoga class from Kindred Spirits Yoga and Wellness. Um, don't be alarmed by the fact that I'm filming in the studio. This is 100% a practice meant to be enjoyed in your own home. Like I joked last week, but it's really pretty true. The only reason I'm here is because the sound is better and it keeps my family from busting in on us while we practice. Um, we'll give it another minute. I hope everybody's had a wonderful week. Um, not gonna lie, this was a tough week for me. My little extrovert heart um, had some, some tough moments this week, but um, I tried to get outside as much as possible. I tried to just have little loving moments with my family when possible. I listened to a lot of great books and podcasts that kind of kept my mind feeling uh, supported. That was really nice. Um, we're just all getting through it the best way that we can right now. Um, if you have any book or podcast uh, recommendations, definitely share with me. I'm totally guilty. I zoned out with uh, Tiger King this week and that became my little uh, not guilty, guilty pleasure. Um, woo. But uh, all right, let's go ahead and get started. We're not going to worry about needing any props or anything today. Just a yoga mat and enough space to be able to practice on. For this morning's practice, we're going to start on our uh, backs. So whatever version of kind of uh, your favorite style of Supta Baddha Konasana is going to work. And what I mean by that is, please note, I'm going to be turned around so that my head is at the front of the mat and I'd like you to be that way too, please. So we're going to come to rest on our backs. If your hips and low back would enjoy soles of the feet together, knee out, knees out wide this early in the morning, that's perfect. Go ahead and um, find your comfortable grounding start that way. If you're like me and it still feels a little tight this early in the morning, then soles of the feet plant in wide, letting your knees rest in against one another is gonna be perfect. Um, and then let your hands either rest comfortably at your sides with your palms resting up, ready to receive some good energy. If you really feel like you wanna kinda of check into your breath, let your hands come above and below your belly button. And start to check in with your breath here. If you're comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. We're gonna take a few minutes to just kind of come into our body here and come into our breath. Starting to deepen the breath here, really paying attention to our inhales as they come into our lower abdomen. Using those inhales to open up the body, creating space, particularly if you felt tight or constricted this week. And let those exhales help you get rid of any tension you don't need anymore. It's not serving you, it's accumulated where we don't need it and our exhales can help us just blow it away. <sighs> Trying to bring a little symmetry to the breath, so allowing our inhales and our exhales to kind of mirror one another. Working towards removing any pauses or catches in the breath and just enjoying that nice, smooth, even wave of inhalation to exhalation. Couple more breaths here. Really noticing how we're feeling in our body. Notice our hips, notice our shoulders. If those places in particular are feeling tight, imagine using that inhale to kind of tease it open. Exhale, let it go. Remember our inhales are nourishing us 
and our exhales are very cleansing for us. Inhale, taking in what we need. Exhale, letting go of what we don't. One more moment here. And if you're ready, go ahead and take a big, full inhale. Fill up the belly, fill up the lungs. And as you exhale, open mouth, sigh it out. Take a kindred breath. Ha. <sighs> Beautiful. One more time. Big, full inhale. And exhale, sigh it out. Ha. <sighs> nice. Gently blink your eyes open. And then just go ahead and plant your feet um, about hips this is apart, knees are bent. We're going to do a little bit of warm up here, moving our arms and our legs, but we're going to first start with our arms. So just reach your hands straight up from up towards the ceiling, palms are facing up, uh, arm is, is just reaching up from the shoulder joint, making sure you ground your lower back into the floor so you've got a nice active um, Front abdomen here, your core is really engaged and that lower back is pressed into the mat. As you inhale, reach the right arm up overhead, maybe, maybe not, your fingertips will touch the floor. As you exhale, bring it back center and switch sides. Inhale, reach the arm up. Exhale, bring it back upright. Inhale, reach it long. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, left arm. Exhale, bring it back, good. Now, we're gonna do that now with our legs. So go ahead and bring your legs uh, to a roughly, you know, a nice bend in the knees, roughly 90 degrees. We're not taking out a protractor or anything here. And then again, make sure really tilting the pelvis, really making sure that lower back is grounded into the floor. Inhale, let the right leg come down. Heel may or may not touch, it's all good. Bring it back up, inhale. Low left leg, exhale, bring it back. Inhale, exhale, inhale, good, exhale. All right, now we're gonna put those both together and we're gonna find out if I've had enough coffee this morning. All right, so legs, ex legs are bent, hands are extended. We're gonna do kind of a right brain, left brain, opposite uh, arm, opposite leg. So inhale, right leg, left arm, extend out, exhale, bring it back and switch. Inhale, bring length. Exhale, bring it back to center. Inhale, bring length. Exhale, back to center. Now the whole time we're doing this, move with your breath here, making sure that lower back is really anchored into the floor. You don't wanna let your back curve up off your mat. Coming back to center on the exhale. Inhale, lengthening it out. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bring it back. Whole time our midsection is really active and engaged here. Inhale, lengthen. One more time on either side. Inhale brings the length. Exhale brings it back. Inhale, lengthen. Good. Exhale, bring it back. Nice. Just go ahead and bring your knees into center. Just give them a little rock side to side. Now let your right foot plant on the ground and we'll just take a half happy baby here. So reaching for the outside edge of that left foot, drawing that arm down into the socket here, bringing a little tension to the legs, opening up the hip on the side. Just breathing here. If you like a little sway, you can bring a little sway. <sighs> breathing, breathing. This should feel good on this side. <sighs> Go ahead and release that left foot and let it plant. And now we're gonna do that on the right side. So grabbing the outside of the right foot for half happy baby. Nice little stretch for the right hip. Again, if you like this sway, take this sway, but make it very gentle and deliberate. Not a, not a you know, vigorous rocking motion here, just a gentle sway. One more breath for that hip. And then when you're ready, go ahead and release the right foot. We're gonna take one more pose on our back here um, before we flip our pancakes and come to our bellies. Um, set up almost as if you were gonna to come to bridge pose. So your feet are planted and your knees are bent. 
Now lift your hips and scooch them over to the right, and then we're gonna drop our knees to the left. Your arms can be at your sides. I like mine here at a T. Nice little stretch. You wanna to try to have the, the knees and thighs kind of stacked. Just breathing into that whole right side body. This should feel nice. One more breath. And go ahead on your next exhale, slowly roll back to center. And then first we're gonna come back to the middle of our mat and then we're gonna set up to take that on the opposite side. So we're gonna lift our hips just enough so we can scooch them over now to the left side of our mat and drop our knees to the right. So breathing here, breathing into that left side body. This should feel good. One more breath on this side. On your next exhale, go ahead and let your knees come back to center. And then we're just going to extend our legs all the way out to our, um, towards the front of our, or now what is the back of our mat, and we're going to flip over. So we're going to flip our pancake and find your way back to child's pose. So big toes touch, knees out wide. I should say knees as wide as is comfortable for you. Everybody's a little bit different. And then slowly let your forehead come to rest on the floor. And breathe in here. Take a moment just to connect with your breath. Breathing deeply. Notice your belly as it extends and reaches down towards your thighs. Fill up the belly and breath here. Beautiful, slowly start to lift your torso up and then you're gonna walk off the left side of your mat. Stack your right hand on top of your left hand and then kind of sink back in to sort of a side body child's pose stretch. Big opening for the right side body here. Expanding the lungs, filling up the breath. One more moment here, and then slowly come back to center. And now we'll take that on the opposite side. Go ahead and walk off the right side of your mat. Left hand stocks on top of the right. I'm sorry, I'm getting a foot cramp. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Um, so left hand stacks on top of the right, pressing the floor away, kind of a banana child's pose. Big opening for the left side body here. <sighs> Breathing, opening up the lungs. <sighs> Go ahead and slowly come back to center. And now come to a tabletop just long enough that you can curl your toes and shift your hips and find your way back to down dog. Take a nice bent knee down dog here. I'm just gonna step off my mat briefly and make a little adjustment with the screen. Nope, it's good, perfect. All right, bent knee down dog here. Um, really pedal out the legs and start to bring a little space to the body. Remember that in down dog, we're just trying to, especially our first down dog, we're just trying to create a little space and some length in the, in the muscles of the backs of the legs. So pedaling out the heels, warming up the calves, Shifting the hips, wagging the tail. I always like to say that everybody warms up their down dog a little bit differently, but the end goal is we're just trying to create a little bit of movement and space in the muscles of the back of the body. So gently shaking out the head and the neck, making sure that our hands are spread wide, really pressing down through the finger pads to take a little pressure off the wrists. Shoulder blades are down our back. We're gonna to start to move a little bit now through some sun A's to bring even more movement to the body. So when you're ready from our down dog, inhale up on both toes. Exhale, bend the knees, look to the front, step or walk to the front of your mat. Inhale to a flat back here, crown reaches forward. Exhale, let it go. 
One full breath takes us all the way up extended mountain. And our exhale brings us all the way back down, forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, planting the hands, stepping or walking the feet back, finding our way to our bellies to the mat. Hands are under the shoulders, tops of the feet released to the floor. Inhale here for a little cobra. Exhale, let it go. Maybe think about trying this little minor cobra modification. Let your hands come just off the sides of your mats and they're kind of tented like spider fingers. Elbows pointing up as you inhale, lifting up. See how that feels. Exhale, let it go. Find your way back to down dog. Just moving and breathing here, bringing some heat and some space back to the body. Again, inhale up on both toes. Exhale, bend the knees, look to the front. Step or walk to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, let it go. One full breath brings us all the way up extended mountain. And our exhale brings us back down, forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, step or walk the feet. Find your way to the floor, saving that inhale for that big delicious cobra or up dog. Exhale, shifting back down dog. Beautiful. Big cleansing breath. Exhale, sigh it out. Nice. Again, inhale up on both toes. Exhale, bending the knees, looking to the front, stepping or walking to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, let it go. One full breath takes us up. We're going to stay here this time. As you exhale, right hand comes behind, left hand reaches forward, standing twist. Really breathing here. On your next exhale, bring your hands back to center. Inhale, bring some length. Exhale, open up to the opposite side now. <sighs> Lengthening up through the crown of the head, reaching your fingertips away apart from you. Big stretch, big twist. One more moment. When you exhale, come back to center. Big full inhale. Exhale, take it all the way back down. Forward fold. <sighs> inhale to a flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, step or walk the feet back, finding your way to your belly on the exhale, saving that inhale for that big delicious cobra or up dog. Exhale, shifting back down dog. One more time, this time if you feel like taking a little bit of a back bend, see how that's gonna feel. If there's anything else you need to add in your sun A to feel good, go ahead and go for it. Inhale up on both toes. Exhale, bend the knees, look to the front. Step or walk to the front of your mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, let it go, forward fold. One full breath takes us all the way up. Maybe open up the heart towards the ceiling a little. And when you're ready to exhale, take it back down, forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, planting the hands, stepping or walking the feet back, finding your way to the mat. Saving that inhale for that big yummy cobra or up dog. Exhale, shifting back down dog. Beautiful job, guys. Before we get into more of the flow, keep in mind that at any point, if you need a sip of water, you need a towel break, you need a child's pose, this is your practice to take it where you need it to go today. Listen to your body, give it what it needs. If something, a pose IQ you know isn't work for you, just feel comfortable to modify it at home. Just listening to your body is what's best this morning. All right, yay. Let's get moving. So, from our down dog, we're gonna inhale up on both toes. Exhale, bend the knees, look to the front. Step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, let it go, forward fold. As you inhale, we're gonna sink the hips, find our way to a chair pose. In my head just now, I thought that sounded silly when I said, all right, let's get moving, and then we're probably gonna be in chair pose, but that's okay. We're grounding here. 
We can't move freely until we're secure and grounded. So let's do that here. Feet are solid. You're resting in the corner, the four corners of your feet. You're trying to avoid using your toes to balance. Legs are active. Midsection is zipped in. If your shoulders need a break, hands together at heart center is perfect. Deciding where you want to take it here. Thinking about lowering the hips while keeping the torso lifted. We're here for a few more breaths. You guys are doing amazing. Breathing into that belly here. Nice, soft breath. We're here for three more. Inhale fully, exhale, let it go. Inhale, good, exhale, last breath. And on your next inhale, stand up to stretch it out, bring some space back to the body, yum. And then exhale, pour it forward, fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, stepping or walking the feet back, finding our way down to our bellies. Inhale, big cobra or up dog. Good. Exhale, shift back down dog. Beautiful. All right. So from our down dog, inhale the right heel up. As you exhale, drive the foot between the hands. We're coming to crescent pose. So think first about widening your feet a little bit. Remember, we want train tracks, not tightrope. And then when you're ready, let your inhale lift you up, crescent pose. So widening our feet a little bit here helps us feel more strong, more secure, more stable. And even though my thighs aren't anywhere near one another, I'm imagining that I'm drawing them towards one another and that helps me feel more secure. You can always start here with hands together. Remember coming back to the midline helps us feel more stable. If you wanna grow your arms, that's cool too. Just notice what happens with your breath. Has your breath shifted to the upper chest? If it has, just gently guide it back to the belly. <sighs> Breathing here. Nice long cold crescent. You guys are doing amazing. <sighs> Three more breaths here. Inhaling in the belly, exhale, letting it go. Inhale, feeling rooted. Exhale, let it go. Last breath. Now when you fill up the lungs, exhale, plant the hands, stepping the right toes back, rolling through, finding your vinyasa here. Find your own way back to down dog. Maybe you feel like you need a whole bunch of chaturangas today to burn off some energy. That's perfect, just do it slowly and carefully. Maybe you've been hunkered over a desk and you just need all the cobras. Go ahead and take it. Maybe none of that sounds good and you just wanna press back to down dog. It's all perfect. We are yoga, we are yogaing together, but not the same. So on the left side, inhale the left heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands. Remember, squiggle the feet as necessary, widening them just enough so that you feel strong and stable in your crescent. Yes, squiggle is a very technical term, by the way. Just means scooching your feet. <laughs> All right, so we're here in our crescent on the side. Notice any differences that you detect in your body. How does one side feel versus the other? Make any little adjustments so that this side feels great. Legs are strong. Midsection, make sure we're not flaring our ribs. Everything's kind of drawn in and, and gathered and, and, and active. Remember, if your shoulders need a break, this is perfect. Drawing our thigh bones towards one another, even though they are nowhere near one another, just solidifying our base here in our crescent. You guys are doing a wonderful. Three more breaths. Breathing into the belly, softening to let it go. Two more times. With your next inhale, fill up the lungs. Exhale, plant the hands, stepping the left toes back, rolling through your vinyasa, saving that inhale for that big yummy cobra or up dog. Exhale, shifting back down dog. Guess who forgot a sweat towel? Hang on. Whoop, gotcha. All right. Woo. 
don't even have the heaters on. Beautiful. Long hold warrior two. So from our down dog, inhale the right heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands, spinning the back foot flat. You know I love a sound effect. All right, so finding our way to warrior two. We're gonna be here for a good bit, so making sure we're happy with our alignment. Right toes and right knee are tracking towards the front of the room. Back foot, that left foot is angled a little bit and we're really rooting down, we're really grounding down through that pinky edge of the foot, helping to lift and activate the inner thigh. Shoulders are stacked over the hips, arms reaching out. Soften the gaze here, maybe give a little smile. Notice where your breath and your thoughts have gone. If they've gone to a place that's less than peaceful, less than kind, just guide them back. It feels good to take up space here and just open it all out. Three more breaths. Into the belly. Exhale, let it go. One more time. Soften and let it go. Now for the transition, inhale, fill up the lungs. Exhale, windmill, plant the hands, stepping the right toes back, rolling through your vinyasa. Find your path back to down dog. It can be the same every time, it can be different every time, as long as it's serving you every time. Yay, same on the left side. <clears throat> Inhale the left heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands, spinning the back foot flat, wait for the sound effect. Whoosh, warrior two. Remember the sound effect is optional. Pretty much everything but the breath is optional in yoga. But we're gonna take a second to make sure we're happy with alignment on this side. Toes and knees are tracking towards the front of the room. That outside knife edge of the right foot now is grounded. Back leg is strong. Extending the arms. Breathing into the belly. Soften here. Notice if there's some place that you're kind of extra tense and gripping and see if you can soften right there. Three more breaths. You guys are doing amazing. When you're ready to come out of the pose, inhale, fill up the belly. Exhale, windmill, play at the hands, stepping the left toes back rolling through your vinyasa. Whether that means cobra or up dog or just pressing back to down dog, it's all perfect. All right, we're gonna do now those three poses just with one breath for each one. You'll see what I mean here. So inhale, lift up on both toes. Exhale, bending the knees, looking to the front, stepping or hopping to the front of your mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, let it go. One inhale brings us to chair. And when you're ready to exhale, pour it down, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, planting the hands, stepping or walking the feet back, finding your way back to your down dog with whatever you need. Beautiful. All right, so same, same, but with crescent on either side. Inhale, the right heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands. Squiggle the feet as needed. One big long inhale brings you up, crescent pose. When you're ready to come out, exhale, plant the hands, stepping the right toes back. Lowering down on the exhale, saving that inhale for that big delicious cobra or up dog. Beautiful. Same, same, but on the left side. One breath here, inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, driving the foot. Widening your toes as needed. One inhale lifts you up. Exhale, brings it back down. Left toes step back. Lowering down through, saving that inhale. Big yummy cobra or up dog. Exhale, shifts us back down dog. Beautiful. Ooh, I learned a lesson last week. Um, bring a cup without a top so then I don't 
have to keep unscrewing it. All right, warrior two, one breath, ready? Inhale, lift the right heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands, spinning the back foot flat. One slow, beautiful inhale brings us up. When you're ready to exhale, bring it back down to the mat. Planting the hands, finding your way back to down dog. However that feels best. Remember, if at any point you need to modify your chaturangas or your down dogs, or excuse me, your up dogs and cobras, that's all good. Just listen to your body, take it where it needs to go today. On the left side, inhale the left heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands, spinning the back foot flat. One slow, beautiful inhale lifts us up. Exhale, brings it all the way back down. Stepping the left toes, rolling through your vinyasa, carving your own path back to down dog. Beautiful. All right. Now, we're going to do those poses, but with uh, twists for them. So from our down dog, inhale up on both toes. Exhale, bend the knees, look to the front. Step or walk to the front of your mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, let it go, forward fold. As you inhale, sinking the hips, lifting the chest, finding our way to chair pose. So remember, we're grounding down heavy in the heels here. Light enough in the toes that you can wiggle them. And now to set up for the twist, hands are going to come to heart center. Imagine you're floating your heart space over your toes here. So that way your chest, torso is upright, legs are active, hands together. As you inhale, imagine lengthening up through the crown of your head. And then as you exhale, we're going to twist to the right. Now, if you're not in the mood for a deep twist, start here. Your left elbow is going to fit perfectly in that groove just above your knees. And you can stay here and twist, and that's beautiful. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, left tricep comes to the outside of the right thigh. Really breathing here. Nice belly breath. Softening the abdomen. You can gaze down at your toes or you can look at the side wall. If it feels okay in the neck, you can always gaze up over that right shoulder. We're here for three more breaths. When you're ready, on your next exhale, go ahead and come back to center and then inhale to stand it up and straighten it out. Woo, bring some space back to the body. If you're like me and you like a wiggle after chair twist, oh, sometimes you just gotta wiggle and shake it out. So take a wiggle. All right, beautiful. From standing at the top of our mats, we're gonna inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, sink back into chair so that we can twist on the left side. Hands come together at center. As you inhale, imagine lengthening up through the crown of your head as you exhale, twisting now to the left. So again, right elbow is gonna fit beautifully in that groove just above the knees. It's almost like we were meant to do yoga. If you wanna take it a little bit further, right tricep comes to the outside of the left thigh. Breathing here. It's a nice soft belly breath. One more moment here. When you're ready to come out of the pose, come back to center on the exhale. Inhale, stand it up. Woo! If you need a wiggle, woo, take a wiggle. Shake it out. Nice. Now inhale fully. We're going to exhale. Take it all the way back down. Forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, stepping or walking the feet back. Lowering all the way to our bellies. Saving that inhale for that big delicious cobra or up dog, but only if those are still serving you. Exhale, shifting back down dog. Beautiful. All right. Taking crescent with a little twist. So inhale, right heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands, widening your feet as necessary. Inhale brings us up to crescent pose. Now, 
Just go ahead and reach your arms forward so they're parallel to one another and also roughly parallel with the floor. Inhale, lengthening the arms as you exhale. Open that right arm, twisting to the right side of your mat. Now we're just going to take the static hold here. We're not going to add any movement to it. But this is a real balance check, so just breathe here. Legs are working hard to keep us stable. Arms are reaching. Don't forget the breath. So many things to think about. One more moment. On your next exhale, go ahead and bring your right hand forward. Inhale, bring some length to the arms. Exhale, plant them, stepping the right toes back. Lowering to the belly. Inhale, yummy cobra or up dog. Exhale, shifts us back down dog. Beautiful. All right. Adding that crescent twist, excuse me, on the left side. Inhale, the left heel up. Exhale, drives the foot between the hands, widening the feet as needed. Inhale, brings you up. Crescent pose. Settle here. You're doing amazing. When you're ready, arms extend forward. Inhale, lengthen those fingertips to the front of the mat as you exhale. Left hand swings out wide. Balance and strength. Grounding and lengthening all at the same time. Breathing here. <sighs> Breathing into the belly. Feeling stable and supported. <sighs> Three more breaths. You got this. When you get to that third breath, exhale, brings your left hand back to center. Inhale, extend the arms up. Exhale, plant, stepping the left toes back. Finding our way back to our down dog, however you need to, with or without the chaturangas, with or without the cobras or the up dogs, it's all good. Beautiful. All right, warrior two. With a little modification of a twist, inhale the right heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands, spinning the back foot flat. Inhale, brings us up, warrior two. Beautiful. Settle here. Now really, I wanted us to be able to get into the outer hip. So it's going to be more of a crescent pose, crescent twist, revolved, than a warrior two. But it's all good. So inhale here, flipping that front palm up, take it up, take it back, reversing the warrior, creating some space. Now as we exhale, we're going to come forward. Left hand's going to plant inside of the right foot, and you're going to pop up on the ball those back toes. On your next inhale, let your right hand open up towards the ceiling, so you're twisting towards that right thigh. Breathing here. Legs are strong. Breathing deeply. One more moment. Go ahead on your next breath and close that right shoulder down. Spin that back foot flat. Inhale, bring it back up, warrior two. Beautiful. Inhale, flip that front palm, take it up, take it back. Reversing the warrior, creating space where we were just twisting. Inhale fully, and on your next exhale, windmill, plant the hands, stepping the right toes back, finding your path back to down dog. Big inhale in your cobra or up dog, beautiful. Exhale, shift back down dog. All right, same, same, but on the left side. Inhaling the left heel up. Exhale, driving the foot between the hands, back foot spins flat. Warrior two. Settle here. And then when you're ready, left hand flips, palm faces up. Inhale, taking it back, reversing your warrior, creating space down that left side. On 
your next breath, go ahead and come down towards the floor. This time that right hand is gonna plant inside the left foot. We're gonna pop up on the ball of the back toes. With your next inhale breath, lift the left hand, reach it up, twisting towards that left thigh. Big stretch for the outer hip. Breathing here. You got this. Active legs, big twist, lots of breathing. You're doing amazing. Two more breaths. Stay here with me. And when you're ready, left hand comes down, back foot spins flat, coming back to warrior two. Flipping that left palm face up, inhale, reversing your warrior. All kinds of space down that left side on the in breath. When you're ready to exhale, windmill, take it to the floor, stepping left toes back. One final vinyasa, finding your way back to cobra or up dog, however you need to. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right, friends. One more little bit of um, activity before we come down and get stretchy on the floor. I'm going to turn my, actually, no, I'm not going to turn my mat. I'm going to be fine. Um, we're going to do just a little bit of side plank work. So we're gonna start with our right side. So you have lots of options in side plank. Um, if you're wanting to be a little bit more, wanting to remain a little bit more grounded, I'm just kind of trying to make sure that you can see everything. Um, keep that, we're gonna start on one side. Keep your um, right knee grounded down into the floor. The other thing that's really important to keep in mind when you're working on any kind of side plank work is your setup. So we're gonna start on a tabletop, making sure that our uh, shoulders are stacked over our wrists. And then, like I said, I'm gonna start by showing you what it's gonna look like with the right knee down. But take a minute, make sure that your right hand is directly underneath that right shoulder joint. You don't want it to be outside of the shoulder joint. You wanna think about stacking it for two reasons. It's safer on the shoulder and it makes it a all right, so here we're gonna be in our side plank. Extend that left foot out. You can bring your left hand to your hip if that feels better. Making sure as you open up that your hand is directly stacked under your shoulder, keeping everybody safe. If you want to extend those left fingertips up towards the ceiling, go for it. If staying here is exactly what you need with that right knee down, perfect, stay right there. You always have options here. You can stagger your feet. So as you can see now, my right foot is in front of my left and they're both flexed. If you wanna stack them, ooh, ha -ha, you can stack them. You can even do fun things like floating that top leg grabbing the toes, all kinds of things. Whatever you wanna do here is fine, but we're gonna be here for four more breaths. It just occurred to me that when I told you you could see my feet, you might not have been able to, sorry. One more breath. And when you're ready, go ahead and let that left hand come back to the mat. Come down to tabletop and then just press back to child's pose for a moment. That's a really super active pose on the right side. So take a minute to kind of process it. Beautiful. If you're ready, we're now gonna work on a little bit of plank on the left side. So go ahead and slowly come back up to a tabletop. I'm just gonna turn around. You can stay right where you are. So finding your tabletop and setting up for it on the left side. Remember, left hand plants under the shoulder to keep it safe and happy. Right foot extends back. You can stay on that knee if that's comfortable. If you wanna extend those right fingertips up towards the ceiling. Take in the variation that's gonna feel good on this side. It may or may not look like the one on the right and that's fine. Again, you have the option to stagger your feet, to stack them, to float the top toes. 
whatever's calling you this morning is perfect. Three more breaths here. You got this. Last sort of fiery pose here. Everything else from here on out will be a little bit stretchier. When you're ready, on that exhale, slowly let the right hand come down. Find your way to tabletop just long enough that you can transition back to child's pose and kind of process all of that activity on the left side now. A couple of breaths. From child's pose, we're going to come on to our back so you can sit up and uh, cross your ankles and roll over your feet. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're going to take a variation um, of a stretch. Sometimes um, people don't love half pigeon, and so this is a way that you can do a similar hip opener without, uh, it's a little bit kinder to the knees if half pigeon bothers your knees. So extend your left leg straight out in front of you. You're going to grab your right leg. Um, so my right knee is hooked in the crook of my right elbow and then I've got a firm grip on the outside edge of my left foot. Now pay attention. I don't want you to stretch. See what happens with your ankle joint here? You don't want that to happen. You want to protect that ankle joint. So you want to keep a nice flex in that foot. It's an active leg here. We're not stretching the ankle joint. We're trying to stretch the hip. Some people like uh, okay. make sure that that left leg is lengthened and grounded. That's kind of your root here. Some people, now I will say this, some people like the static hold, other people like the sway. I always joke that since I used to work in labor and delivery, if you put something that feels like a baby in my arms, I'm on a rocket. So you just get to decide here what feels better. Does the static hold feel better for you or does the gentle sway feel better? Two more breaths. And then go ahead and plant that right foot on the ground. Give them a little hug if you want to. And then we'll extend it to the floor and switch sides. So this time now our right leg is lengthened and rooted down to the floor, keeping us kind of anchored. We're going to grab that left leg. Knee is hooked up into the crook of my left elbow. Again, flex that foot so we're not stretching the ankle joint. We don't want to do that and then decide, is the static hold gonna work on this side? Ooh, ooh. Or is it gonna be this way? So just breathing here. Again, this is a nice variation if you're feeling, if, if you go to a class and half pigeon is cued and it just doesn't feel good on your knees, this is another way to try to get a similar stretch. Um, and then you can just join, rejoin the class for the next pose. So two more breaths here. Go ahead and release the grip on that foot. Now we're going to spin around one final time. Um, come to lie on our back so the top of your head is up towards the front of your mat. We're going to set up for a bridge pose. So soles of the feet are planted firmly on the ground. Your heels are close to your seat and your knees and feet are roughly hip cysts apart. Taking care to make sure that your knees aren't bowing out or knocking in towards one another. Everything's sort of pointing straight at the back of your mat. And then you're gonna drive down through your heels and lift your hips up towards the ceiling. So we've got a really active back body here, creating some space in the front body, making a nice little kind of active ramp. If you enjoy the bind here, you can clasp your hands underneath of you and kind of wiggle walk your shoulders in towards one another, pressing the pinky side edges of your fists into your mat, really opening up the space in the front body here. Breathing deeply, we're here for three more breaths. And when you're ready, if your hands are bound, go ahead and carefully release them. Let your back come all the way to the floor. I love windshield wipers here. So if you enjoy that too, you can plant your feet wide and just gently let your knees 
Sway back and forth, side to side. And now we're going to set up for um, a, a deeper supine twist, so just a deeper twist. Like we started class um, with stacking the knees. If you have a favorite way to twist at the end of class, feel free to take it now. I'll cue my favorite way. So draw your left knee into your chest and your right leg is gonna go all the way to the floor, heel is on the mat. Hug that left knee in close. And then when you're ready to exhale, send it across the body. So my left arm is extended out from the shoulder. You can also take goalpost arms here if that feels nice. Your gaze can be up at the ceiling, or if it feels good in the neck, you can gently gaze over that left shoulder. A lot of you guys have heard me say this. For me, personally, a yoga class isn't a yoga class unless there's a twist at the end. It just feels like a yummy sort of wringing out of any last remaining tension. Two more breaths here. When you're ready to come back to center on the exhale, slowly return. And if you're with me, bring both of your knees into your chest. Give them a little hug, a little squeeze. And then we're going to send that left leg down and keep the right leg close. So with the left leg extended, we're going to hug that right knee in on the inhale. As you exhale, send that right knee across the body. And again, your arm can be extended or you can bring it to goalpost arms, whatever feels better across the chest and shoulder. And your gaze can either be up at the ceiling or over that right arm. <sighs> Breathing and softening here, making sure we're taking nice cleansing abdominal breaths. Remember nourishing on the inhale and cleansing on the exhale. Two more breaths. When you're ready to come out of the pose, slowly roll back to center. Draw both of your knees in towards your chest. Give them a little hug, a little squeeze. And we started this hour with half happy baby, but we're gonna finish now that we're nice and warm and feeling hopefully a little more spacious with full happy baby. So reach for the outside edges of both of your feet. So the pinky side edges, drawing those arm bones down into the shoulder sockets, giving the legs a little bit of tension, opening up the hips here. This is also another spot where some people enjoy the static hold, some people enjoy the gentle sway. You get to decide what camp you're in. If you want to alternate extending the legs, deepening the stretch in the hamstrings, just kind of playing around with happy baby here for one more moment. Two more breaths. And then if you're ready to let go of your feet, draw your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your shins and give yourself a big, yummy, sweaty, congratulatory hug. You made a little bit of time for yourself today so that you could meet your breath and your body on your mat. Relieve a little tension, relieve a little stress. Hopefully bring a little levity and a little laughter back into places that have been feeling tough lately. And from here, we're going to find our way into Shavasana. So make any final adjustments that you need to your clothes. Get comfy on your mat. Let your arms flop out at your sides and let your feet just widen out to the outer borders of your mat. Get comfortable. We're going to go through here, just a simple guided meditation, guided relaxation, really. 
So start to notice your body resting comfortably on your mat and soften into that support. Don't feel like you have to hold your body or brace yourself. Just relax into the feel of the floor. Bring your awareness to the top of your head and soften any tension around the forehead and the eyes. Relaxing down through the jaws to the cheeks. Softening the neck down through the shoulders. Moving down through the arms, relax the muscles of the upper arms. Soften the elbows. Relaxing the forearms down through the wrists and all the way out through the fingertips. Travel your awareness back up your arm, your elbow, your shoulder. And now focus your attention on the area around your heart, softening the heart space and breathing here a moment. Relaxing the ribs down through the abdomen to navel center. Softening the hips and pelvis. Relaxing the muscles all around the thigh bones, down through the knees, through the calves, through the feet and all the way out the toes. Let your awareness travel back up your legs, to your hips, to your navel center, and heart center. And finally, let your awareness rest on the sensation of your breath in your nostrils. Coming back to that smooth, even inhale and exhale. Feel as if your whole body is breathing. Stay here a few moments and rest in a much deserved Shavasana. Slowly start to bring your awareness back to the room. 
gently bringing a little movement back to the body. Start to wiggle the fingers and toes. Wake up wrists and ankles. Reach your arms overhead and stretch your feet towards the front of the room like you're waking up after a lazy nap. Carefully roll onto one side, drawing your knees up and pausing here, resting your head on your arm. Take a moment of gratitude for our ability to practice together even when we can't be in the same room. Shelly and I are so grateful for all your support, encouraging messages and posts. And we cannot wait till we're all together. Enjoy this moment and notice how it feels in your body when you're able to create a little space through some mindful movement and meaningful breath. Be proud of your hard work, of the space that you created, and the light that you let in. Whenever you're ready, carefully press up to a comfortable seated position. Hands can either be at heart center or gently closed. Thank you for sharing part of your day and part of your practice with me this morning. Can't wait till we get to do it in person. Have a beautiful Sunday and a wonderful start to your week. Namaste. All right, friends, thank you so much for sharing in this Sunday morning practice. Be sure to follow our YouTube channel. We're posting um, full hour-length classes and some short little videos there. Um, if you're missing and need a little bit more yoga in your life, we can't wait to see you in person. We love you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, be well this week. Be safe, be well, and take care. Love you guys.